What's up, guys, and welcome back to a very fuel gagey and cindery Unity edition of Project Time Garage. I thought it might be a good idea to make a quick video on troubleshooting fuel sending units because uh, they're pretty common uh, failure points in these older vehicles. So um, I found myself doing it a lot. So I figured I would take you guys along and uh, troubleshoot the, the fuel gauge on this truck. Now, I need to set this up. There's a few things you do need to know. One of the things that you need to know is that um, I've already put another cluster in the truck and it does the same thing. So it's not an actual gauge problem. And of course, I'm back to my original cluster. That would have been one of the last videos I did. I'll link that up here somewhere if you want to see fixing the speedometer in this truck. My issue is right now that the, the gauge, it, it moves, but it's way down on empty and you can see it kind of wiggling around a little bit there. Um, I did also put a new uh, fuel pump unit, which includes a new sending unit in the truck too. So that, that may be what our issue is. I don't know. I bought a quality pump, at least as the, the biggest quality I could find. There's not a lot available for the V10 trucks out there right now. Uh, anyway, let's, uh, let's start from the beginning and I'll just kind of work you through what I do. And it may be right, it might be wrong, but in the end, we're going to get there. So come on. Now, before we do anything at all on the actual truck itself, let's go over to the computer really quick and let's look at a wiring diagram because it'll be helpful to know which wires are the fuel pump and which wires are the ground and, and, and which ones actually are the sending unit and all that stuff. Uh, kind of get our bearings about us and then we'll kind of, uh, I'll probably start from the front of the truck, which may be counterintuitive and work my way back. So let's go do that. I'm sorry uh, if the audio is a little bit janky here. I'm recording you off the laptop in my uh the microphone of my laptop so sorry about that in advance all right well this is the uh this is the wiring diagram for the actual um for the actual instrument cluster itself and uh the one obviously we're concerned with here is the fuel gauge so it looks like um this thing has one two three wires on it uh it looks like the this wire goes all the way across the bottom and goes up to a ground the bottom one's a ground the top one goes uh, all the way across. It also connects with every other gauge here and goes up to the ignition. So we have power, and we have ground, and then this, uh, this connection here, B11, well, that's the connection that goes out to the fuel tank. It doesn't tell what color it is right here, but um, we can look at the connector below it and find out that it's B11. Also, it's important to mention that the low fuel warning module, you know, that'd be the idiot light uh, on the dash for low fuel, also taps into this same uh, B11 circuit, also has the same 12 volts, and I don't see where it gets its ground, so maybe it comes through here, I don't know, but either way, this is the light. All right, uh, nope, I take that back. This is where it gets its ground, right here, A10. Okay, perfect, so I don't really care about this, I'm just getting my bearings. So we care about B11, which is uh, the part that goes out to the tank. I know the gauge is working because it actually does move and the low fuel light does come on. Um, since this gauge is common with all the other gauges and all the other gauges work just fine, I'm inclined to believe that the power and the ground are probably okay uh, as it stands. So back to B11. This is connector A over here. This is connector B over here, and here's 11. It's a dark blue wire. So this dark blue wire goes down. It doesn't show any junction points, which is hard to believe, and goes right into the fuel gauge sensor in the tank. And then uh, it has the little variable resistor there and returns black and white, which, uh, which comes up to number nine. And number nine is this ground here. Okay, so the black and white out to the tank is this one, and the dark blue is this one. So now we're armed with some knowledge. Now, it could be an issue with this wire, or it could be an issue with the black and white. I don't know. Uh, it does look like there's a connector here. I don't know if this is the connector at the top of the tank or if this is a connector further down, but either way, we gotta figure that out. Um, also, I'm going to have a look at the factory. This is not the factory diagram, so I'm going to jump back and have a look at it real quick. 
Here is the wiring diagram for the fuel tank system, the OE one from the, the factory manual. Um, starting at the, at the actual tank itself, we have the black and white wire. We saw that. That was our ground. And we have the wire 18, which is uh, uh, dark blue. And we have a dark green and black also. So there are three wires that come out of this. The dark green, black runs the fuel pump. I assume that's power for the fuel pump. Dark blue goes up to the sender, and black and white is the ground for the whole mess. This is something the other diagram didn't show us. This is a connector here. A black connector located left fender side shield. All right, so that's important. So that is likely the first place I'm going to test this. And uh, the theory is I'm going to ground out this dark blue wire as close to the cluster as I can get. So probably on this side of this connector, I'll ground it out and see if the gauge goes spinning over to full. If it does, then we can move on down the line. If it doesn't, then we need to investigate between here and the cluster. So let's, armed with that knowledge, let's go do that. Well, I thought I would take a second and just kind of illustrate how the fuel pump works. I hope the glare is not too bad on this. I see there's a lot up here, but what are you gonna do? Basically, the long and short of it is the gauge itself has 12 volts and a ground to it. And the actual mechanism is moved by varying the amount of ground that this wire gets. So if we have 12 volts here and a ground here and nothing here, the gauge reads flat empty. But if we take this right here and just strap it straight to a ground, the gauge will peg. And that's how you, you were gonna test the gauge anyway. We're going to find a connector here somewhere as close to the gauge as we can get it, and we're going to strap it straight to ground, and the gauge should move. At that point, we'll move on down the line until we work our way all the way to the pump. I hope it's not the pump, because the there's only one connector here, and um, you know the actual field up itself is working fine, so hopefully everything is good there. I don't want to drop that tank again, for sure. Long and short of it, though, is that the pump is submerged in fuel in the tank and there's an arm here that that floats inside the gasoline uh, the, the level of the gasoline brings it up as it brings it up there's a, a mechanical arm that sweeps back and forth across a basically a bunch of, uh, of wires wrapped around a piece of ceramic it's just a variable resistor and the further this thing goes up the further this thing moves down and the more ground it applies to uh, to this wire here. So our float goes up, more ground here, gauge reads uh, more full here, and that's the long and short of the whole thing. So that's the theory we're gonna use to go and do this quick test. But first, let's put the truck down so we can get to it. We're short. Well, there are two connectors up there. It looks to be the top one. It said it called out a black connector, but both of them are black. So I think what we need to do is we need to unplug this one and uh, just have a look at the connectors first and see how they look. And then we'll back probe this thing and put it back together. Okay. I have my, uh, I have my, my back probe plugged in here to the connector. This is the blue wire uh, that goes from the sending unit and then eventually goes all the way up, I guess, into the truck and the gauge. This is the last junction point I see. So I have this wire and the theory is if I turn the key on, touch this to ground, I should get a gauge reading if the wiring between here and all the way into the truck at the gauge is, is right. Okay. Have the truck down some and we'll get our wire. Bring this inside with us. Okay, fuel gauge right here. Let's just turn the key on first and see what we get. See if we inadvertently fix the stupid thing. We didn't inadvertently fix it.
and I am grounding I'm grounding it now so here we go we see that the gauge is coming up with me holding this thing to a ground and that's basically proving the wiring all the way into the truck okay well and I just removed it okay the next step for us is to raise the truck back up and I'm going to get to the connector right on top of the tank we're going to back probe it do exactly the same thing me and all of YouTube we're not fitting under there just believe me it's a tight fit now we're plugged up trying to find somewhere that might have a decent ground to it okay just just for uh, just for you guys knowledge um, where the sitting unit goes on the top of the tank there's a plug right on top of the sitting unit itself I am back probed at that so I'm at the tank okay with that grounded let's find the key and turn the key on see what we get well that's not good is it it's going right up isn't it ah, yeah, yeah. so that basically seals the fate on this the brand new fuel sitting in it from Delphi that I put in here is junk and I have absolutely no um, comfort that another one that I put in there wouldn't do the same thing. So I'm going to have to decide exactly how I want to proceed on this. But what a pain. Absolutely ridiculous. Anyway, hope you guys got something out of this. Um, I appreciate you watching. Uh, as usual, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, tell all your friends about us. As I'll see you next time.